Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of the Hot Girl Guide podcast. First things first, I just want to say there are so many new listeners and potentially watchers to the pod, and I'm so grateful that you're... And I'm just... I just want to say there are so many new listeners and maybe watchers to the pod and I just want to say I'm so grateful you're here and that you are coming back every single week. Honestly, I feel big things for this podcast. I love sitting down and chatting. I could talk about many subjects for many hours to myself in my head. So I'm like, why not talk out loud so that people actually benefit from them? So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for following the podcast. So many new people are following now, which we love to see. And the more of you that follow and the more of you that share it with your friends, the bigger this podcast can get and the more we can do, you know, the more fun stuff we can do. Like, who knows? The sky's the limit. Do you know what I mean? So I'm excited. Today is Monday. It is the first week of April, the first official week. I'm an April girly. I was born on April 22nd. It was a Friday. It was actually Thursday night, but like slightly past midnight. So I was supposed to be a Thursday girl, but I'm a Friday girl. And I was 10 days late. So I was supposed to be an Aries, but I'm a Taurus. Anyway, you don't care about that. What you do care about is it's April. It is a new month. There is fresh energy in the air. I don't know if you can feel it, but in my opinion, April is the best month of the year. I am slightly biased because it is my birthday, but I don't care, okay? I do not care. Also, we're not doing perfume of the pod because I don't really have any other perfumes at this very moment and time to show you. So sorry about that. So we're gonna do a book recommendation today. Now, the book recommendation for this podcast is Only Love Is Real by Dr. Brian Weiss. Oh my God, this book, the tagline is the story of soulmates reunited. If you are a romantic, if you love a good love story, but this is nonfiction. So this is real. Dr. Brian Weiss is a hypnotherapist who specializes in past life regression. (gasps) To all my girlies who love all things energy and past lives and love oh my god it, it it's just such an amazing book i devoured this and it is high on my recommendations actually all the books from dr brian weiss are high on my recommendations but this was the book that's next to me right now so we're going to do a book of the pod for the next few episodes and i'm going to recommend you a book every single pod because i love a good book but i love non-fiction i'm not a fiction girly And I'll tell you why I'm not a fiction girly is because when I was younger, I read this book called A Girl Called Blue and it traumatized me. It was based on a true story and it was so devastatingly sad, especially for, I think I was about 12 at the time, maybe younger, and I was traumatized. So from then on, I went to nonfiction books and I love a good nonfiction book. But the reason I love Only Love Is Real is because it's like a story, but it's a real story. It's a true story. Oh my God, it's just so good. It's so, so good. Anyways, so today's episode is all about self-sabotage and the difference between self-preservation and self-sabotage because there is a big difference. This podcast episode is dedicated to Brianna. So Brianna, I think she's a listener of the pod. I'm not 100% sure, but she was going through it last week on her Instagram stories. I'll give you the backstory because I think it adds to the pod and the topic. Brianna had set herself a challenge. She wanted to post a reel every single day in 2023. For 365 days, she wanted to post a reel every single day because she wanted to change the narrative about herself that she wasn't consistent and that she couldn't stick to anything. So that was her why behind it. Last week, she came on her stories and she was very upset and she was asking people who were watching her stories for advice because she said she was feeling really overwhelmed and that she didn't think she wanted to do 
the reel every single day anymore. She didn't think she could do it anymore. It was overwhelming. She wasn't feeling good about it. She was overwhelmed with other things in her life. So she was contemplating not doing the reel every single day. And she asked specifically on her stories, I did not give her unsolicited advice. She asked on her stories, could people give her advice? So I slid on into those DMs and I gave her a podcast (laughs) worth of voice notes all about self-sabotage. So the way I saw it was Brianna, and I'm sure she won't mind me sharing this, Brianna was getting in her head about these reels. She was looking at the numbers. She was wondering, is anyone even watching anyway? Does anyone even care about these reels? I'm putting all this time and effort. Is anyone even watching? Is like, does anyone even like them? Am I being silly posting a reel every single day? Like, should I just stop? I mean, I've done 90 days. That's such an achievement in itself. And I said to Brianna, I said, why are you doing the reels? What is your why behind these reels? Is it so that they go viral and reach millions of people and you get millions of followers? No, that's not why you're doing it. You're doing it to prove to yourself that you can be consistent. I was like, Brianna, a reel does not have to be this big production. It could literally be a video clip of you brushing your teeth and doing a voiceover being like, I did not feel like recording myself today, but I promised I would show up for myself every day. So here's today's reel. I said it could be a video from last year when you were on a holiday in Spain being like, I don't feel good today. And I looked at this video of me in Spain and it was a better time, but I know this time will pass. I gave her so many ideas and I was like, Brianna, it's not about how many people view the reels. It's not about how many people like them. It's about you coming back to your why. And then I told her, I swear to God, I gave Brianna a podcast. I told her, I said, you know what you're doing right now? You're self-sabotaging. Because when you are trying to change narratives about yourself, when you are trying to create a new identity for yourself, your brain is going to look for every excuse in the book to stay comfortable. Your brain is going to look for every excuse in the book to do what you've always done. Why? Because then there is no unknown and your brain doesn't like the unknown because we don't know what it is. Our brain likes to keep us safe and likes to keep us comfortable. And a lot of times our brain will go into self-sabotage mode instead of self-preservation mode. There is a very big difference if Brianna was doing those reels and was like, you know what, these are really not what I thought it would be. I can be consistent in a different way. I'm going to post a photo every day. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the other. It's just I'm not really vibing with videos. I don't really like video content. And to be honest, I don't see value in me posting video every day. That is very different. Having a moment of, ooh, I wanted to do this thing, but to be honest, I actually don't like it, is very, very different from, oh, I'm going to do this thing and now I'm second guessing myself and now I'm, even though I am enjoying it and even though I am feeling fulfilled and even though there is a sense of achievement there, I'm just going to stop. Those are two very, 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 very different things. And you have to learn for yourself to look for the signs. Am I self-sabotaging right now or am I self-preserving? Self-preserving looks like knowing what is good for you and knowing yourself so deeply that you know, no, this isn't working. This isn't what I thought it was going to be. I'm going to move on to the next thing. That's self-preserving when, like for me, for example, there are so many different things I tried. Me and my friend a few years ago, Shauna, we decided to set up an influencer marketing agency. It was called Lindeza. Love the name. Such a good name for an agency as well. Lindeza is a Portuguese word. And basically it means like being beautiful on the inside, not just the outside. Oh, it's such a stunning word. We had gorgeous branding. And we had a really good idea. Shauna is a talent agent. She comes from a big acting background. So she had that 
side covered and obviously my expertise is social media so I had that side covered but it just was not working. We were at a stage in our life that Shauna didn't really have the time to invest. I didn't. I was in Brazil. I didn't have the time to invest. It was such a good idea but it wasn't the right time for that. So instead of us like putting all this effort and energy into something that we couldn't fully commit to to make what we wanted to make it into we self-preserved and we said you know what this isn't working this isn't the right time we're both not in the space mentally or even physically right now to put the effort and energy that is needed into Lindeza so we're gonna leave it we did not self-sabotage it's not like we were going really well things were going really good we were doing everything we needed to do like we were putting in the time and effort and energy and we were like oh we're just going to stop because we have a fear of failure and what if people think this about us or what if this or what if that we weren't self-sabotaging we were self-preserving because we both saw this is a great idea but the timing is not good and there are so many things in your life that you will self-preserve for whether that's a friendship that really isn't working out for you anymore that you feel like you're giving way more to a relationship maybe a relationship isn't working anymore and you're like you know what I have to really put myself first here I have to walk away from this thing it could be a job it could be a job that you thought you really 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 wanted but now you're so unhappy in the job so you're like you know what I'm gonna walk away instead of self-sabotage would look like if you got a job you really wanted you worked for years you absolutely love the job but your manager is giving you a hard time and it's making you be like do you know what I don't even want to do this job anyway I don't even like this industry that's self-sabotage you're letting the manager win and you're sabotaging yourself in your career obviously you can move to a different job and get a different manager and that would help but What I'm saying is self-sabotage is when you're sabotaging your future self. And the best way to look at this and what I said to Brianna was, think of Brianna at the end of this year. If you keep going with the reels, how will Brianna at the end of this year feel? Will she feel burnt out and be like, that was such a waste of time. I don't like making reels. I don't like video content. I don't know why I did that all year. Or will Brianna at the end of the year be like, oh my God, look, I'm so proud of myself. I changed this narrative. I can be consistent. I made a reel every single day for a year. And this is so amazing. And I am so accomplished. And I don't have to make another reel again if I don't want to. But I did this because I respected my decision. And I told myself I was going to do it. I said to Brianna, I said, which one is it? And whatever one it is, that's your answer. And sure enough, Brianna is still making the reels every single day. She did not self-sabotage in that moment because she's probably stayed consistent at something for three months before. But the three month mark is where it gets really uncomfortable and where you're trying to break this cycle about yourself, no matter what it is. You're trying to break this cycle, whether it's you want to stick to the gym and you want to get in a really good routine with the gym or you want to get in a really good routine with work or you want to get in a really good routine with your friendships or I don't care what it is in life or you want to be really creative and you want to dedicate an hour every morning to painting and you do it for 30 days and then you're like, do you know what? I want to sleep in this morning. I don't need to paint for an hour every morning. Maybe I can just paint for an hour every week. What is that? That is self-sabotage. Because you're choosing not to do something out of fear, out of feeling uncomfortable, out of the fear of succeeding. Not only do people have a fear of failure where they fear, you know, trying something and everyone seeing them trying it and then failing at it and then feeling like a failure and a loser. People also have a fear of succeeding and a lot of people don't realise that they have a fear of succeeding. But some people are living in a narrative for so long where they're not successful at something they've been trying and trying and trying for years and they know exactly 
what to do, and what the next steps they should take to achieve this goal or do this thing or have this thing that they always wanted. But they go into freeze mode because they know that that success would make them uncomfortable in a way or their body is like, I know you can do these things to get to this thing that you've always wanted, but let's just stay here. Let's just stay here where it's comfy and we can expect what every day is going to look like and there's going to be no change and we're just going to stay where we are. That is self sabotage and we don't want to sabotage ourselves. I have heard this phrase so so much recently. There's only one life. We only get one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you've ever wanted. Yes I'm quoting Eminem but we do and I think we can get so wrapped up in our own bullshit of our own lives that we forget that this is not the dress rehearsal. And if you had a past life, you're, that's erased from your memory unless you go way deep into it. And if you're going to have a future life, you're not going to remember this one. This life right here, right now is the only one you've got. So why are we playing small? Why are we sabotaging ourselves? If you have something you want to do, I want you to look at yourself right now in the mirror or just think to yourself or grab a pen and a journal And be like, what am I sabotaging myself at right now? Because there is something. We're always sabotaging ourselves in different ways. Last week, I sabotaged myself so much. I knew that I had two very important emails to send off to two very important people that would benefit me. And I just didn't do it. I was like, oh, I'll do it later. Oh, I'll do it later. Even though I knew it was a positive thing. And even though I knew by sending these emails to these people that it would probably end in a positive result for me, I was self-sabotaging in those moments of being like, oh, I'll do it later. Oh, I just want to spend 10 more minutes scrolling on TikTok and I'll do it later. And this is not me being like toxic productivity that you always have to be going and doing something and being something and leveling up. But what I'm saying is there is something in your life right now that you are self-sabotaging over. I don't know what it is. It can be anything. It can be taking more time to relax. You might know in your soul, in your heart of hearts, that you need more time to relax because you are a stress head and dis-ease is disease. You know what I mean? Like stress is one of the biggest causes of a disease in the body. And you might be so stressed all the time, so highly strong, feeling like you can never relax, that you always have to be going, that you always have to be doing something. And you might know in your heart of hearts that you need to switch off and that you need to take a break and that you need to sit down for an hour in the evenings and read a book and that you need to really manage this stress somehow. But you are not doing it and you are self-sabotaging by not doing it. Self-sabotage looks different for everyone, but the outcome is the same. And the outcome is not getting the thing you want, not changing the narrative about yourself, staying comfortable as opposed to being a little bit uncomfortable, but doing what you actually want and becoming the person you actually want to become. I feel like I did not even take a breath for the last 20 minutes of speaking. I feel like I was on such a roll and I was just channeling all of these words and they were just coming out of my mouth. But basically, the moral of the story is I told you today exactly what I told Brianna. In moments of self-sabotage, when you catch yourself self-sabotaging or when you reflect and you, you're like, oh, I've actually been self-sabotaging for the past three months, Then you ask yourself, if I continue to do this thing or if I start doing this thing that I'm currently self-sabotaging myself over, what will my future self in six months, in nine months, in three months, in a year, in five years, what will they think if I keep doing this thing or if I do this thing? Will they be disappointed in me for doing this thing and be like, Bitch, you did not honour yourself. You stayed in a toxic relationship that you knew you should have get gotten out of. And look where we are now. That's not self-sabotage. By sticking with something that you know 
is not good for you long run and does not align with the person you want to be, that's not self-sabotage if you stop doing that thing. That is self-preservation. But if you are in a current cycle of self-sabotaging and you know your future self will be like, why didn't you just keep doing that thing? You were doing so well. You were getting so close. You know, the miner in the mine where he's nearly at the gold. You were that miner, but you stopped doing that thing or you didn't start doing that thing and you sabotage yourself. And look where we are now. You have to see with everything in life and be able to decipher when you are self-preserving and when you are self-sabotaging because when you're self-sabotaging it is very easy to tell yourself you're self-preserving being like no I'm so overwhelmed at the moment I'm so I'm so tired at the moment I don't need to do this thing that I really want to do that is my literal life dream I don't need to do it I can do it later I can do it in a month I can start on Monday I can start next year I can start in January fuck that do what you want to do and stop sabotaging yourself and don't worry I'm talking as much to myself as I am to you right now because there's a few things that I'm self-sabotaging myself at the moment over I wanted to start a whole new thing on my website And I wanted to start it in April. The last few days of March, I didn't do what I needed to do in order to get that thing over the line. So now I can't start it till May because it's a thing that is monthly. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's a surprise, but I self-sabotage. And I know I did because the last few days of March, I had this intrusive thought being like, you should do that thing and get everything in place and figure this out because April is coming. And then I was like, mm, I don't have to. I'm tired now. I just want to chill. I just want to sit down. I don't need to do it right now. I have to do all these other things. I can't do that. I could have done it. I just chose not to because I was self-sabotaging. But now by me making this episode, I feel like it's a bit of accountability and there will be something coming at the start of May that is like a monthly thing you know what I mean I'm excited I'm excited about it um so yeah go forth and don't self-sabotage anymore please if we could all stop doing that or not even stop but just catch ourselves and be like "Mm, I think you're kind of sabotaging yourself right now I think you could keep doing this thing or could start this thing you're just sabotaging yourself because you have a fear of failure or a fear of success or a fear of being judged or a fear of being uncomfortable and the fear might be so deep down that you don't even know what you're fearing but you just know that you're sabotaging yourself and that is fine because we're gonna stop okay great Thanks for listening to this podcast. Don't forget, leave this podcast a five star rating. It really helps the podcast. Follow this podcast. It really helps the podcast. If you want to find any more content from me on the internet, search Rebecca Short on TikTok, on Instagram, RebeccaShort.com, Rebecca Short on YouTube. I am so many places all over the internet. It's going to be hard not to find me. You know what I mean? Okay, goodbye.